person, one demographic that you can always guarantee will pick you up is ex-forces and Scottish people. And usually it's sort of the, the demographic sort of joined together. And um, <laughs> they're usually Scottish ex forces truck drivers. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, boom, boom, boom. The same as that we have like hitchhiker bingo. You know? It's like if you get a couple, it's like double, double the money. <laughs> um, but yeah, this poem is basically, I mean, we had a good chat about the trucker about, you know, what went on in Northern Ireland and I think people still don't really know what really happened there and um, and, and this is kind of just a collection of, of the stories and a bit of a bit of my manifesto about uh, sending a load of boys to run around fields with heavy artillery. A training ground for the British Army. Sorry to alarm you but honestly really they called it the troubles because they never did take it seriously. <coughs> it was just quite handy to patrol an armoured landy, streets and fields were guaranteed hot meals. A foreign hostile land without the sun or sand, not too far from England. Cutting down on fuel costs, so what a life lost to they didn't give talk. They had this trick where they'd take a mech up in a helicopter, blindfold the bugger, or hover lower, and then check your mic. Laugh as he'd shout or white light, white noise for the long cash boys. Internment. We have a sense at Her Majesty's pleasure with no charge or jury to measure the nature of your crime or length of your time. They use the word to hide the absurd. <coughs> Internment, imprisonment, the troubles, civil war, plantation, occupation, a people forced from sight, stripped of land and rights. But back to living history, it really is no mystery. The troubles helped the army. This little occupation didn't cause a refugee situation. The people ran away to see another day on foreign building sites or works nights that a cousin's Irish pub find a way to slug it out this northern Irish route. The people fled, saw a loved one shot dead, and among the troubled faces, the army built bases, block road built watchtower to watch the people cower. And when the IRA got real power, by bombing a Brighton hotel, making Maggie see the hell that she had unleashed on many a person's head, so her own loved ones dead. Maggie says, I think it would be wise to talk and compromise. And a quarter of a century later, we still berate her, the hunger striker here. And as we try and reason why too many people die, I say disband army. They have little sympathy with the civilian population. They worsen a situation. We need an army of social workers, doctors. So take your 19-year-old job and find him a better job. Training in chemotherapy, because where I'm from, cancer is the new enemy. Or my mum on an 18th month waiting list to see a psychiatrist or a physiotherapist. And the politicians don't give a fuck. Sure, it's slow death through neglect. Them ex-terrorists got paid <coughs> off. While the Alliance got laid off. My mum marched for civil rights. Joined peace people, stayed out of fight. Now she's rolling in pain because the healthcare provision is insane. While the politicians are rolling in sterling. Guess it must dilute that all Ireland yearning. <laughs>